Okay, hello everyone. I think today we have a question. Is it somewhere or... Hmm? Do we have a slide for it? No? Okay, um, today we have an internet question. Hmm. Go ahead. So Malcolm asked. Um, no, that one. Sorry. So um, a student from the Chinese Chan intro class asked, um, can you become enlightened only from sitting mantra recitation and Buddha's name recitation without learning Buddhism, uh, Buddhism or Buddhist principles? When I first heard the question, uh, my first reaction is that if she didn't tell me it was from her Chinese class, I would have said that uh, don't tell me who uh, don't tell me who asked this question. Probably Daniel or something. <laughs> because my beloved disciples would never ask me such questions. Because uh, it's uh, the kind of questions uh, uh, that um, there's not, that you don't ask in polite companies. Uh, the, uh, the Chinese in particular, they are very well read. They have a lot of materials on uh, Buddhism. And so for them to ask this question means that they're really out of sources. They don't know who else to ask. Uh, but then you ask this question because it's really not uh, explained in the Buddhist circles. Uh, it uh, puts us in a bind where uh, basically since really the patriarchs didn't talk about this, uh, the Buddhas didn't talk about this, uh, I have to make up something. So that's why really polite people would not ask this question, you know. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, um, the question is, uh, you can, can you become enlightened? The question is about enlightenment, right? Okay, enlightenment. How? By... Uh, reciting the Buddha's name by reciting mantras, by doing meditation. What else? Let's cover all the bases. Yes, that was those three. Without learning the Buddha's principles or Buddha's Without name. learning um, Buddhist principles. Okay. What do you think? Is it possible? Remember, the context is that we keep on talking about we are really one of the very few people who teach meditation and who say that uh, the purpose of meditation is for you to become enlightened. There's no other purpose than becoming enlightened. The reason the Buddha taught meditation to his disciples 
was originally to help them become enlightened quicker. Okay, and they did. They did become enlightened. Countless uh, disciples, Buddhist disciples, became enlightened. Okay, and that was in uh, back then when he first started teaching. And over the years, over 3,000 years, uh, the number of people who became enlightened through Chan meditation became fewer and fewer. Okay. So nowadays, when people talk about meditation, especially Chan meditation, unfortunately, they don't talk about enlightenment anymore. Okay. So now, because of that, the, the purpose of practicing Chan and teaching Chan no longer really has uh, the proper perspective, if you will. Okay? Um, we're not saying that you, sh you must become enlightened. We're telling you that just like everything else in life, when you do something, you need to have a purpose in mind, a clear purpose in mind. Okay? And Chan meditation is not, there's only one purpose, is to become enlightened. Okay. Uh, and so now, uh, for example, I listen to, uh, I watch videos on the Japanese monks who teach uh, Zen meditation in Japan right now. They don't talk about enlightenment. They talk about uh, I don't know, you feel better, you feel peaceful. Uh, it's not the purpose of meditation. Mm. You practice meditation, of course, any form of meditation, you will become peaceful. Okay? You will uh, have a lot of benefits, a lot more than we can tell you all. Okay? Uh, but uh, nowadays, that's why uh, I'm some, somewhat glad that, that uh, they asked the question uh, because uh, we need to be honest about it. Uh, we need to be clear about the um, range of child meditation. It's supposed to get you all the way to enlightenment, from low level to high level enlightenment. All right. Yes, someone has a question here in black. Mô Phật Bạch Thầy. Thầy nói hồi nãy, nói là Đức Phật á, thiền, ngày xưa thiền đó, Thầy biết nhiều người ta đắc, đắc giác ngộ. Là cái, cái người thiền đắc, À, đắc giác ngộ này mới dạy những người thiền, những người đệ tử đó thì nó mới đắc giác ngộ. Rồi thời nay đó nó thấy người ta thiền nhiều quá, không biết có đắc giác ngộ được không thầy? Okay. Master in the past, um, the Buddha taught his disciple to become enlightened, and the enlightened teacher will teach the student to become enlightened. But nowadays, there are so many people practicing meditation. I wonder if they still um, become in line. Okay, so a related question. Uh, if you're not enlightened as a teacher, can your student become enlightened? That's another fair question. Uh, all right, uh, that's fine. Anyone has any, any ideas about those two types of questions? Yes, Daniel. It's funny he showed up today for a meditation class. White. Black. Meditation, meditation, even if your teacher is not enlightened. Could That's you repeat opinion. that, please? Oh. 
Um, I think the, you can become enlightened if you practice meditation, even if your teacher is not enlightened. Even if the teacher is not enlightened? Yes, that's my opinion. Hmm. Okay, uh, anyone else? Check the battery, maybe that microphone is either... Anyone else has any ideas? Yes, Green. Uh, well, depending on the good roots you planted in past lives and the past, uh, it's, I, I think it could be possible to uh, become enlightened if, and surpass your teacher. But I think for the most part, uh, if you only practice meditation, Without learning the proper principles, you're you're kind of uh, you're gonna you're gonna plateau uh, somewhere before you hit a, a higher level of samadhi. I, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Hmm. Okay. Traditionally, uh, when you there the uh, there's a school and there's a form of uh, meditation practice called pilam where they recite the Buddha's name. They don't meditate like, like us. They recite the Buddha's name. And they tell themselves that's different, that's not meditation. But the meditation, Chan school recognizes it. At least I recognize it as a form of meditation. And in that school, hmm, Originated in by uh, in in China by uh, Great Master Hui Yin, um, he he advocated reciting Buddha's name, and a lot of his disciples recited Buddha's name and they um, attained rebirth of the Pure Land. And Master Hui Yin himself recited Buddha's name, and he became enlightened. All the patriarchs in Pure Land. Master Hui Yin, being the first patriarch in the Pure Land School, uh, they all are enlightened. In Mahayana, you don't call a patriarch unless you're enlightened. Okay? So they're enlightened. Uh, however, uh, in that Pure Land School, uh, Master Hui Yin turned out to be very erudite. He knew a lot about uh, Buddhist principles. He's very scholarly. Many of his disciples and followers were scholars as well, of high level officials, officials in the court. So, so they are an exception. And then uh, there are uh, cases where, uh, uh, like um, the sixth patriarch, uh, he was a uh, illiterate person. He couldn't afford to go to school uh, in China back then, in the 8th century in China. And he had to work uh, by collecting firewood and chopping down dead trees and so forth uh, in order to take care of his uh, mother. Just mother and son lived together and he became enlightened by listening to one phrase uh, of the uh, Vasha Sutra. Uh, the, 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 the sentence goes, you should produce a mind that dwells nowhere. Okay. Uh, and him being, uh, you see, it's, it's interesting, it's from the Vasha Sutra, a sutra, of enlightenment, and it is uh, the statement of the principle is is uh, in uses uh, very very simple words, okay, non-Buddhist words, if you will. Okay, uh, nothing it doesn't require special jargon at all, and this great patriarch, six patriarch, heard that sentence. Okay. And he became enlightened instantaneously. 
Okay. Uh, so, to cut it short for you, uh, let's talk about enlightenment. Why is it enlightenment? Okay. In Buddhist enlightenment refers to uh, your attain a level of samadhi. Enlightenment is a state of samadhi. Or, in other words, it's also called a state of wisdom. Okay? It's both. Also a state of purity as well. Okay, the Chinese would like to explain to you enlightenment is uh, wisdom, enlightenment is uh, whatever. But actually, uh, enlightenment uh, is a state of mind where uh, you are pure, you are in samadhi, and you have tremendous clarity of mind. That's the Buddhist definition of enlightenment. All right? So the Chan school in particular specializes in, uh, in the, um, teaching you, providing training for you to enter that type of samadhi. So far, so good? Okay. The Chan school in particular has so many ways, have excellent training methods for you to reach those levels of enlightenment. The lowest level of enlightenment, Maya, Mahayana, excuse me, is ninth level of enlightenment or fourth stage art. Below that, we don't consider it to be enlightenment. For us, enlightenment carries a specific Lab set of criteria, okay? Until you reach fourth level, fourth stage ahatship is not called enlightenment. Even at fourth stage ahatship, we call it small enlightenment. And after that, you go, you continue, and you we provide you further training. You reach, uh, let's call the the so-called enlightenment, if you will. There's no need to call it small anymore. You call it enlightenment, meaning that uh, uh, it is a level of the wisdom uh, that, uh, that is the same as the Buddha, if you will. What you see when you, when you, when you reach that level of enlightenment is the same kind of vision and knowledge as the Buddha's. Not all of it, but whatever you can see in that state of enlightenment is the same, okay? It is, uh, is a small portion of the Buddha's vision, if you will. So if you compare enlightenment as to be able to see this diamond, okay? Then, the various level of enlightenment are able to see various facets of that diamond, whereas the Buddha's enlightenment sees all of it. Is that clear? So that's why the Chinese, when you read the, the, the Buddhist texts that, that most Chinese don't even know what, what it means, basically they, they say that when you enlighten, you have the same, uh, the same wisdom as the Buddha. They refer to, and again, the Chinese are very abstract. You have to be careful. And that's why we try, in the West, we try to demystify it for you. Uh, because even uh, the Chinese, uh, the younger Chinese nowadays, they are confused about what they meant because their teachers don't know what they mean anymore. And if those who understand what it means would not dare explain it because it's politically uh, not desirable for you to have that kind of knowledge in China, okay? You draw too much attention from the government, which does not tolerate that kind of, you know, knowledge, if you will. Yes, Black. Nó không có giải thích cho rõ ràng. 
nó nói một cái câu nói ra để, để cho người ta đi mò bởi vì mò hoài mò giết mò lộn xộn hết rồi bây giờ thiện hiện giờ theo con nghe những thầy thuyết pháp đó thầy thiết một cách rõ ràng hai cái nó khác nhau mô phật So people usually don't really explain clear. So um, whoever listen to it and then they have to try to um, find out for themselves. But now when I listen to you, you explain very clearly, very easy to understand. Because it's because when I first started to learn and investigate Buddhism, my, my plan was only to do it temporarily, it's just for fun. As a, research and development part of me, okay? And I thought I would spend 10 years learning from the best if I could. And then after that, I move on to something else more interesting, more useful with my life, okay? Uh, and if you were to go for a PhD out there, you need to plan for 10 years. So I figured 10 years should be enough. And then I go get, do something else. Uh, so. And then, so I read a lot, being uh, from my background of uh, getting degrees and so forth. And, and uh, I'm Vietnamese, so the Vietnamese culture spe uh, you know, emphasizes uh, education. Uh, the Asian cultures, uh, the Asian parents, uh, their pride in society is to have uh, well-educated children children with a lot of degrees, okay? Um, and so, so that's, that's why I read a lot as well. I read a lot of materials in all kinds of languages. I devoured everything I could put my hands on, whether it's Vietnamese, English, uh, French, Chinese, whatever, okay? And it turns out that a lot of those materials I took seriously came from the Chinese. I never really could take the Vietnamese translations seriously, unfortunately. And this is not a knock on them. I'm just saying that from my, from my angle, uh, I never could take those translations seriously. Uh, uh, And then uh, also something very unfortunate that happened in my life is that I, I found the uh, English translation materials from Master Sheshua to be the best there is about Mahayana, okay? Uh, I said, and unfortunate is because after I read his translation to English, okay, It's unfortunate in two ways. Number one is that I had so many questions that his disciples who were supposed to train me could not answer me. Okay? Uh, and, uh, and the one thing, uh, well, anyway, is a different, that's... Uh, Let's skip that. That's for a different topic for another day. Okay. Hmm. So they couldn't answer me. Uh, because, so that's why when I later, when I was uh, told by my Chinese master to teach, I, I would try to remedy the situation. Uh, if I didn't have it then, I would like to make sure you have it and you wouldn't have to Uh, be confused like I was for a long, long time and frustrated for a long, long time. Didn't know what a fourth stage art meant. Didn't know what enlightenment uh, mean. Uh, what is the difference in fourth stage art versus uh, enlightenment? What is the difference between fourth stage art versus uh, eighth ground bodhisattva? Because the Chinese text says, and you know, the great wisdom Shastra says, It's from Bodhisattva is comparable to four stage art, which is total nonsense. Okay? 
And so this is, this is what's going on in the Chinese and the Asian understanding of Buddhism. They don't understand it at all. And they believe they understand it. That's why I look at the Chinese who say, you learn from our language. I say, yeah, I understand your language more than you can understand it. Just because you read it, you understand the words, doesn't mean you understand the Buddha's uh, teachings. So anyway, so what happened is, is uh, my, my misfortune is that, uh, number one, uh, had a lot of questions, uh, uh, and number two, uh, number two, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, be- the questions were because the teaching were too vague. Hmm? It's not clear. Uh, you, you know, teaching is so broad, so wonderful, so multidimensional, and yet, and yet, uh, the Buddhist teachers cannot reconcile them. Okay, the Buddhist teaching is is like a structure, if you will. You build a high Eiffel Tower. Okay, then you need to have a structure, otherwise it will collapse. It cannot last. So Buddhism or Chan, among which which is Chan, is that as well. It has it's structural. Okay, in order for you to become enlightened, okay, uh, I like to liken it to building a structure, building a house, a building. So you need to have the foundation, you need to have the, the expertise, you need to have the labor, you need to have the knowledge, and all those things in there. It doesn't happen by magic. It's hard work. Okay? So, Buddhism, the reason we're able to do that, okay, to build the Eiffel Tower, to erect a building, is because from knowledge. And it takes work. Okay? So, uh, and Buddhism, more interestingly, Buddhism is like Everything about Buddhist teachings, they mesh. The Buddha taught everything for a reason, and they all are interconnected. Okay, so you can go through the Buddhist knowledge, the Buddhist knowledge by the Chan school. Okay, and you do that, you can become enlightened. And many have back then. Throughout the history of Buddhism, many have so far the last 15 years have been doing this. And they are, the, this, this is why once you understand what I'm talking about, then you don't ask me those kind of questions because you know that my knowledge is limited. You don't want to, to embarrass me, okay? Because uh, when I get embarrassed, I don't forget who embarrassed me. It's not a threat. It's a fact. Okay? So you go through the Chan school, you do Chan meditation, absolutely, you become enlightened. You recite the Buddha's name, absolutely, you become enlightened as well. Uh, you recite mantras, you become enlightened as well. You recite sutras, there's no need to study sutras, by the way. You don't need to understand. You should recite sutras. You also become enlightened. Okay? you observe purity to the utmost, you also will become enlightened. There's so many ways to become enlightened. So you see, once you understand it, you can come in from so many doors. They call it Buddhism, they call it Dharma doors. You have so many Dharma doors, you can enter to this world called enlightenment. It's a wonderful world called enlightenment. And believe me, when you, when you become enlightened, you say, wow, it's well worth it. You know, and then you, you know, what happens to the people who become enlightened? They go back and they check. They double check everything they heard. This is the problem with these people. This is why you don't want to have disciples. Because they're the first one who will denounce you. Just like the secretary will denounce you uh, if you misbehave. <laughs> okay? So that's life. Okay? This is why the smart monks 
the, the, the successful, some successful monks, okay, they would not have disciples, left home disciples, because they know that eventually these people will catch, up, catch on to your uh, been misleading them. <laughs> so it's not a good thing for you, okay? Uh, let alone, uh, so, so, so that's the thing. Your disciples are the one who will betray you first. They will denounce you. Okay? And the ones who don't denounce you, who understand it, who really agree with you, wouldn't say a thing. <laughs> so it's uh, not a good thing to do. That's why uh, there's an, it's not a good profession. I don't advise you to go into being a, a Dharma master like my uh, Chinese master. It doesn't pay. It's not worth it. Why am I still here? Uh, I have nothing else important to do. <laughs> Waiting for retirement, if you will. Anyway, so so number one, well, number two question: the teachers who are not enlightened can their students become enlightened? Yes, they can. Okay, uh, they can, even though the teachers are not enlightened, the students can become enlightened. Okay, uh, but it's very rare because what happens, re reality is this. It sounds theoretically is possible, but reality, you better know this. Reality is that uh, uh, your Catholic teachers, that take an example, <laughs> okay, just for the heck of it, I don't know why. We'll just take an example, you have a Catholic meditation teacher. Is it okay or shall we use something else? It's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Suppose you learn Catholic meditation, okay, and uh, and uh, whatever they teach you over there. Uh, I saw some sex who teach you to uh, bow and lie down on the floor, very similar to the Tibetans. Okay, you do that. Okay, in theory, you should be able to become enlightened yourself. In theory, that right there is enough for you to become enlightened. Believe it or not. Okay? The Catholics didn't know that, but don't know that. But I'm telling them right now just bow like that. They can become enlightened. Okay? But it takes longer than meditation, our style of meditation, a lot longer. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. Now, so the various meditation methods that's practiced out there, whether it's Buddhist or non Buddhist, you can become enlightened, absolutely. Okay, reality is that that Catholic teacher, the Catholic uh, priest or father who teaches you those things, they are the ones who will prevent you from becoming enlightened. So you can become enlightened by yourself, but you tend to be slowed by those teachers themselves. Not because they intentionally try to stop you, necessarily. It's just that they, out of ignorance, will do things that will dissuade you from, will stir you and slow you down. Okay? Uh, some of them, of course, are jealous. Some of them are, uh, uh, are insecure. They're afraid that once you become enlightened or you open your wisdom, you know more, and uh, you will come back and denounce them and say, you know, you've been teaching us all the wrong things. Become enlightened anyway. <laughs> so now I don't want that to happen to my children, you know, my nephew and my neighbors and so forth. There's no need to do that, okay? Uh, but they, 
if enlightened people would not do that, by the way. But because these teachers, they didn't, they didn't know any better. They don't know any better. That's why they're afraid that they will be denounced. The people who denounce them are not enlightened. Okay? And they are the most dangerous. Okay? So that's why, that's why, in general, your teachers who are not enlightened would be in your way. That's reality. Okay? Uh, my point being that you become enlightened any, any kind of methodology, okay? Any way. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, in particular, there are a lot of people who are enlightened who are non Buddhists. Uh, for example, I've been telling you, I've been telling you about two very famous examples, okay? And there are more, but I cannot reveal you their names because they're still alive, okay? Uh, uh, two famous ones like Pope John Paul II is a second ground bodhisattva, okay? He is enlightened, clearly in Buddhism, and he went over there in, in the Catholicism and became a pope. And, and when he was assassinated, when he was, uh, there was an attempt of assassination on him. He was lying in his bed, recovering, okay? Uh, and he was getting better and better. So his disciple, uh, Benedict, who later became Pope Benedict, his successor, became his successor, went over to his deathbed, supposedly, and started giving him communions. <laughs> John Paul said this himself. He said, I was lying there recovering, okay, and my disciples, my followers, very concerned, they came and, and saw me, and paid me a visit one after another. In particular, that guy, Ratzinger. Is it Ratzinger? Huh? Huh? Ratzinger. Uh, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger. He came over and he looked at me and he started, you know, talking to me and then, and then he started giving me those, so what is it, benediction or whatever? Okay, uh, the rights, whatever. Uh, and, and John Paul II said, wait a minute. You cannot give it to me. I give it to you. You can't give it to me. <laughs> I'm the Pope. You're not. <laughs> so he basically, John Paul II on his deathbed told Ratzinger, cut it out. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you too, you're over anxious. You can't wait for me to go, right? <laughs> Just kidding. So you see, you see, uh, so John Paul II uh, uh, was clearly uh, didn't follow uh, formal Buddhist training, didn't follow, didn't study Buddhist, Buddhism formally. He became enlightened. His disciple, his follower, uh, namely Ratzinger, okay, uh, I, I think I did tell you privately uh, his level already, okay, if he's John Paul the second is enlightened, trust me, his follower cannot be stupid. Okay, uh, that guy, he's retired, right? So is it safe to claim that he's he's dead? Treat him like he's dead? <laughs> well, uh, he's a fourth stage arhat. Okay, so you see that John Paul II, you know, has assistance, if you will. The polite terms, the assistance. He does. He wouldn't come here by himself. He came here with his assistance. So, John Paul II initiated a lot of major changes in Catholicism because without that, Catholicism will keep on declining. Bad, bad times. So he had to come there and help them. Okay, and in order to help them, he had to become enlightened himself. Okay. Unless you become enlightened, uh, you're helpless against the demons. That's why. The Chinese don't talk about this, okay? There's a reason why we have to send enlightened people to this world. It's because without enlightened people, the demons would take over the world, destroy it so quickly before you know it. You won't even know it. And that's why you need enlightened people in the world. And that's why Catholicism 
we had to send over there an enlightened being called John Paul II so that he can undo a lot of bad things that were done to Catholicism over the history of Catholicism. If, you, if, if, that, if they continue that trend, they would go into, they would be destroyed. They're shooting themselves in the foot for a long, long time. So John Paul II went over there and took out a lot of bad stuff, namely Vatican Bank. Okay? Money is corruption. The more money, the more power you have, the easier it is to, for you to be corrupted. Okay? Uh, so a lot of things happen over there in a good way because you need enlightened people like John Paul II. Okay? But he couldn't possibly say that I learned stuff. He can't say I'm a cardinal, I'm an I'm archbishop, but I learned my, my, my trait from Bo the Buddhist principles. You can't do that, right? So he never really formally went to Buddhism to learn the principles. However, uh, uh, I'm citing proof for you to demonstrate to you that if you believe me in, when I said that John Paul II, the second is uh, a second crown bodhisattva, it goes to prove to you that you don't need to study Buddhist principles at all to become enlightened. Why not? It's because enlightenment is a state of mind. It's not knowledge. It's a state of mind. If somehow you manage to develop that state of mind, okay, somehow, then you become enlightened, period. Could happen to you. Could happen to any one of us. Don't ever look around you and say, I'm enlightened, and you not. It may be true for now, but instantaneously, because of the Buddhist teachings, the other person who's enlightened, who's stupid, can become enlightened and surpass you, just like that. That's Buddhism for you. Okay? Don't ever assume you're better. Because... In the Buddhist teaching, it's not clear to you, but in the Buddhist teaching, when Shaklin Buddha was in the world, when he taught all those things, all his teachings, by the way, are called sudden teaching, believe it or not. It's all sudden teaching. When he was preaching the Buddha, he was preaching to the people present. He's talking to the kings, the queens, the, the, uh, the uh, crown princes, okay? the officials, the prime ministers, and so forth. Okay? And, uh, and the ahats and the bodhisattva, he talked to them all. Okay? And when he, he talked to them, the people who were present there, okay, he had to teach them Different levels, because there are different levels, had to teach them different things, okay? And all his teachings, you look at it carefully, is actually all certain teaching. Okay? And later, the patriarchs, like Master Hui Neng, had to appear in the world, come to our world, to uh, zoom in on specific individuals, okay? And give them specific instructions to become enlightened to train us, later generations, how to do that. Did you realize that? The six page chart came to our world to train the future generation, future page charts, how to employ the sudden teaching, how to apply the sudden teaching. Because the way Shakyamuni Buddha did it, is way too advanced for all of us. Way too advanced. Okay? So the sixth page chart had to apply for specific individuals. He said, this person has been doing this, and he says, that's how you become enlightened on the spot. And that person has a different qualification, different way, and, and, and so forth and so forth. 
Okay? And the certain teaching that the six patriarch used uh, applies to many levels. Okay? Uh, so, so, so in general, in general, uh, the proof with uh, with uh, uh, the uh, the great John Paul II uh, Pope is that you don't need um, uh, to study Buddhism at all, okay? And you can still become enlightened through different process, okay? It only happens uh, there are details that I don't know, and it, and there's some that I know and I don't I don't care to explain to you. It's a Buddhist thing. Uh, we don't want the Catholics to know. <laughs> but the bottom line is that I can explain to you why. It happened because it's not the first time that John Paul II was enlightened. He was previously enlightened already. Is it clear? So once you become enlightened already in future lifetimes, you don't need to go through Buddhist uh, training and, uh, anymore to become enlightened. Is that clear? Does it help? Hmm? So, those of you who are not enlightened yet, okay, then to those people, I would recommend, like Ratzinger, okay, small enlightenment, that he should turn to Buddhism to reach high level enlightenments quicker. <laughs> the Catholics are shaking their heads. No, 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 we stay Catholic. <laughs> Be that way. All right, you got that? So the answer in general is no, you don't need uh, to study Buddhist principles to become enlightened, okay, factually, okay, and of course there's another example is uh, is um, uh, I also talked about I like to I liked I liked to bring up was uh, uh, Dian, uh that uh, that Chinese uh, uh, externalist in the Taoist, okay, he's a sixth ground Bodhisattva. Uh, I met uh, a few of his disciples. That's why, that's why the interest. He's very unusual uh, uh, externalist. He has many followers you know, uh, in, in Asia. Uh, anyway, he's also enlightened, and uh, he uh, didn't really teach or uh, uh, learn Buddhism at all. However, his is... Be, his being a little bit higher is again my proof to you that many of his followers uh, who learn from Sudian, okay, he's a Taoist, Chinese Taoist, uh, many of them, uh, he encouraged them to become monks and nuns. That's, that's proof right there that his way of helping his followers and disciples on how to become enlightened quicker. Okay? So that's my, my point. My point is that no, you don't need to become enlightened. Uh, you don't need to learn Buddhism to become enlightened because it has happened before. Uh, and number two, however, uh, you are much better off. You're, you, you can reach enlightenment a lot faster if you go to the Buddhist training, namely, for example, the Chan school is one of the fastest, if not the fastest, training, Buddhist training method that uh, for you to become enlightened. Okay? And uh, you listen, if you research the Chan teachings, okay, uh, the great uh, Chan teachers, they don't need Buddhist teachings at all. You don't need to refer to Buddhist uh, principles at all for you to become enlightened. However, those words that they teach the pupils, the training methods, they may not have the Buddhist jargons. However, they're based on Buddhist principles. 
if, uh, in other words, the Buddhist way of training in Chan, to me, is the most direct way, the mo most direct pathway to enlightenment, if you will. Okay? Uh, so, to clarify a little bit on the second question, related question about the unenlightened peop uh, teachers, can the student become enlightened? Uh, so that's why, even though the teacher is not enlightened, okay, but if the teacher refers to the enlightened patriarch's teachings, okay, like me, I prefer to use enlightened patriarch's teachings to share with you, okay, to reassure you that the proper pathways, the proper knowledge, the proper way to apply efforts, okay? If you do that, okay, you still can become enlightened. Now, I don't need to be enlightened at all. Does it help? Okay? Uh, so, uh, so, you have to be careful. You, you know, uh, if, if you will, there's a corollary to, to my statement that is, uh, even though, uh, even though John Paul II was enlightened uh, through Buddhist uh, training, his disciples also didn't become, didn't need Buddhist training to reach four stage ahat. Okay? However, uh, however, for his disciples to go further, uh, they're much better off turning to Buddhist training if they want to get there a lot quicker or they want to surpass John Paul II, they're better off trying the Buddhist principles. Okay? Hmm. Questions or comments? Okay? You see, so this... This demystifies the concept of enlightenment and, and all these uh, things that are very vague or abstract from uh, the Chinese or Asian uh, Buddhist books and materials, okay? Uh, and so that's why you cannot blame the Chinese monks and the Chinese people in particular uh, on their... Uh, confusion, if you will, to be put it bluntly. Uh, they have this wealth of tre uh, treasure trove of uh, Buddhist teachings in Chinese, okay? But they don't understand it anymore, unfortunately. Um, after my, my, my master died, I, don't, I can't think of any Chinese monk or nun who can, who can understand that treasure trove anymore. Okay. It's very frustrating for me. I ask and ask and ask and look and look and look. Okay? Uh, first look at his disciples. And then elsewhere. Okay? It's not there anymore. I'm talking about professionals, folks. Let alone the lay Chinese people who are bookworms, who are scholars. I can assure you they, they don't understand anything at all. They're only fooling themselves. Okay? And you can tell, very simple. You can tell these people are not enlightened because all they do is recite or quote these, these phrases, English, uh, the, the Buddhist phrases, okay? From the sutras, from the shastras, from the monks and nuns with uh, the Buddhist jargons. And they said, of course, of course, it's because production necessitates extinction. Excuse me? If you cannot explain Buddhist concepts without Buddhist jargons, then you don't understand at all what you're talking about. Okay? Why not? Because you look at me. Do I look like a kind of person who understands production and extinction for you to talk like that to me? So you're trying to impress me. That does not impress me at all. 
It doesn't work for me. Does it make sense to you? If you are enlightened, you understand what you're talking about. Why would you say stupid things to waste your time, open your mouth, and confuse me by saying words I don't get anyway? That's not the action of an enlightened person. Agree or disagree? That's why consistently, folks, just between us, the Chinese idiots, <laughs> or Vietnamese idiots, Okay, uh, they keep on using these jargons to scare you. That's all. I remember sitting through this uh, Chinese uh, 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 Chan uh, teacher you know, who has a temple in Garden Grove. I drove by yesterday. Okay, big temple. Okay, oh, I wish I have a temple like that. The parking lot is about sixty cars. Never had a temple that can park so many cars. <laughs> okay. So anyway, you know, the guy I, I sat through, I sat through, is this a Chan class for 45, for an hour. And he went on and on. One Chan quote uh, follows the next and uh, to the next to the next endlessly. He's very erudite. And... I looked at him and said, you have no clue what you're talking about. You are a parakeet. You're quoting books and statements and principles that you have no idea what they mean. Otherwise, you would not, would not be, be linking them like that in the same session. Okay? So anyway, that's a problem with Chinese people nowadays. They're confused. YouTube has a question, quickly, and we need to go to lunch. Uh, Chris L. asks, uh, if external sex can teach you to become enlightened, then why do we have to vow not to get involved with non-Buddhist uh, external sex when we take refuge with the triple jewels? Uh, good question. When you become Buddhist, we make a vow that not to become uh, involved, or not to follow the external, externalist teachers anymore. It's number one for your protection, okay? And when you're an infant, we, uh, we make you vow not to touch fire. Do your parents do that? You don't do it like the same way of vowing, but you basically teach your children not to touch fire, right? Uh, not to cross the street uh, by yourself, okay? Uh, so you got the drift. That's because uh, you tell, we tell you, we assume that when you become Buddhist, you are basically a state of infancy. So we teach you these things so that you avoid getting into trouble, in essence. But once you become enlightened, then uh, you no longer have that constraint. You can go and become Sudian. You go and become an externalist like John Paul II. <laughs> and it's okay. So you're exempt from these rules. You understand that? Okay? So unenlightened people, they say, oh, 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 you're breaking the rules. Oh, oh, uh, sacrilege, sacrilege. Okay? Uh, but once you become enlightened, uh, not low level like uh, John Paul II or Su Tian, uh, you have a lot more freedom in your actions, in your teachings, okay? Uh, that, why? Because you have more pathways, Dharma doors, you will, using a Buddhist jargon, Dharma doors, more methods for, for, for you at your disposal to help your pupils become enlightened quicker without, without um, too many restrictions. So that's why initially we tell you that as a reminder, it doesn't mean we're afraid of externalists, okay, at all. It's just that when you, uh, you don't want to get confused right now, 
And uh, once you become an externalist, it's very difficult to ex for you to execute from them. They don't let go. Okay? Uh, in our temple, you're free to leave any time. I tell my monks and nuns, the gate is wide open. You can walk out any time you want. But don't think about coming back. Okay? Going out is very easy. Coming back is not. Okay? Because I'm very vengeful. Once you desert me, like a woman. <laughs> Once you desert me, when you desert a woman, don't expect her to be nice. <sighs> okay? So, so that's why, that's why uh, you, you don't want to mess with the externalists yet until you are strong enough, until you have enough wisdom to deal with them. Uh, once you're there, they, cannot, they don't let go of you. What happened is that uh, I have some uh, disciples who used to be externalist disciples. They went over to us, and uh, it's uh, a lot of hassle coming from their teachers. Okay? It's not worth it for us. Too much trouble. Okay? Can be uh, not good for your health, my health either. So, or the teacher's health either. Okay? Uh, so that's why. All right. Any other questions? Very good. We stop here. Thank you all. And I invite you to go to lunch. <laughs>